All right, so now we're getting to the fun stuff, right? We are, we're going to start, you know, banging things around, at least uh, banging things around in our head. So momentum and collisions. Okay, so last time we talked about uh, conservation of energy and said momentum is conserved. That is the sum of the momentum of a system initially is equal to the sum of that system finally. And then we restated that as a two object system, right? Here's our initial momentum. There's our final momentum. They have to be equal to each other. But energy is different here. Energy is not conserved within these two objects. It's conserved completely, right? Um, but not it's not kept within these two objects in the way, same way that momentum is. Okay, so in most collisions, we lose some energy from the system. It doesn't disappear, it just leaves those two objects. So we can think about it as being dissipated through friction, right? Two things rubbing each other, sound. Sound requires energy to create. Heat um, is a form of dissipation. All of those ways that energy is not going to disappear because energy in the big system is always conserved. But within this smaller isolated system, uh, that system can lose energy through friction, sound, heat, uh, um, vibration, all sorts of different ways. So the energy of initially of that system is always going to be higher than the energy in its final state. This collision, which really defines almost all collisions, and we're going to come up with a couple of different sort of uh, special cases, is called an inelastic collision. Okay, And so if I drop a basketball over here, it bounces back up. There's a collision here. Um, it bounces back up, and then the, on the bounce, it goes a little bit shorter. And then the next time it goes a little bit shorter, it goes a little shorter, right? So with each of those collisions, that basketball is losing some of its energy until it's just sitting on the ground, right? And then it doesn't have any kinetic energy or uh, any potential energy. What happened to its momentum, right? Well, that's complicated because it's actually colliding with the Earth, right? And so the Earth is being affected by that momentum change. Right, whatever the momentum is conserved between the Earth and the basketball system, but the Earth is gigantic, right? And so it's not going to, it's got not that's going to be so insignificant to the Earth uh, that we really can't even think about it. So we won't worry too much about what happens to momentum here. It is conserved, um, but energy is not. One of the ways to remember that it's called inelastic is just think, okay, elastic is about bouncing back, right? A rubber band that stretches. An inelastic collision doesn't bounce back. It's unelastic. Um, and it, so the energy doesn't stay at its original level. A completely inelastic collision is a special case. This is one of our two special cases where a object collides with another and they stick together. This gives us a second equation to deal with if we want to try and solve a problem, okay? We can always say that momentum is conserved. That's our first equation that we can use. The second equation is, okay, here's our momentum equation in terms of M and V. Um, but in a completely inelastic collision, we can say that the final velocity of one is the same as the final velocity of two. So this term here is equal to this term there. Why? Because they've stuck together, right? So if they're stuck together, they're going to be moving at the same velocity in the final state. And so that means if this is the equation we're trying to solve and say we know this guy, we know the masses, um, and we know one of the final velocities, that means we can say, oh, I know the other final velocity as well, because this is a completely inelastic collision. So we'll do some of those problems. Uh, and that's why that, this is the connection you need to make here. Completely inelastic, 
means they're stuck together, and it means that we can use this equation. The other type of special case is what's called an elastic collision. So this is the bouncy collision, right? Not the unelastic. This is elastic collision. And it means no energy is lost during the collision. So we said that uh, energy doesn't have to be conserved. It can be conserved, or nearly so, in an elastic collision. And so a collision of pool balls is a good example of that. Bouncing a super ball uh, is a good example of a nearly elastic collision. There aren't really any elastic collisions in the world, but there are some that come so close that it becomes useful um, to solve them as if they were elastic. Momentum is conserved, of course, but since energy is also conserved, we can use a, a, a second equation here too. We can sum up the energy, the half mv squared, of all of our objects initially, and it's going to equal the energy over here. Okay, so this is a special case. This guy, which essentially says energy is conserved in the system, is not always true. But for an elastic collision, it is true. And so if your problem tells you it's elastic, um, then we can use this equation to solve the problem. So, big picture, we have most all collisions are inelastic. That is, we lose some energy in the collision. In that case, we can only use the momentum equation. This one is always true. Conservation of momentum is always true. We have two special cases. One special case is the inelastic one, in which the velocity of the two objects is the same at the end because they're stuck together. The second special case is an elastic collision, uh, in which we can say that the energy of the system, in this case, two objects, uh, is going to stay the same uh, after, before and after the collision. 